Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Play that sweet music. <laughs> Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Ooh, we. Let's listen. That just sounds so good. So good. All right. We are jumping into the Big Ten East today. How you feeling? I'm good. You feeling good? I'm I'm really good. You know what else is good? Tunica, Mississippi. Oh, the yes. South's premier sports gambling destination. Glad to be back. They have got six incredible sports books. We have enjoyed them thoroughly being with us for football and basketball season. Uh, college basketball, anyway. Uh, they will be back with us again. Football season and college basketball season. They have got some wonderful sports books. Go over to tunicatravel.com to get uh, more information on those. Whew, I am stoked. Tunica, Mississippi. You can see them right behind us if you're watching on the video. Otherwise, you will see the uh, the stuff down in the description if you're listening on the podcast. So, tunicatravel.com. Make sure you go and follow us over at winningcureseverything.com. All of our social media, all of our podcasts, all of our YouTube videos, etc. are over there. We're on Periscope, Facebook, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc. Go check it out. Do it to it. All right, now that we have blown through... About two minutes of time, we got to get rolling. The Indiana Hoosiers, five and seven last year, two and seven in the conference, returning starters, seven on offense, eight on defense, number 26 most experienced roster coming back this season, number two in the conference. Head coach Tom Allen, 10 and 15 in two years. Now that's two plus years. He was an interim for that's right. the last, uh, but he's a defensive guy. But this team went from giving up 340 yards per game in 2017, that was good for number 27 in the country, to number uh, 83 at 424 yards per game. 83 yards per game difference there. Uh, Number 52 total defense, uh, sorry, total offense, but number 88 scoring offense. Quarterback Peyton, uh, Peyton Ramsey has to improve his downfield accuracy just to be able to keep his job. Like they've got the Tuttle kid from Utah that's coming in. They've got the uh, the other guy from last year. Like they they got options. Ramsey's the better option right now, but we'll see. The secondary returns three starters. Uh, Marcelino Ball is a hybrid playmaker. He he plays linebacker and safety. The experience should make the unit better this season than they were last year. They averaged only four point one points per scoring opportunity, and they allowed four point nine. That margin minus point eight. Points per trip, number 116 in the country. That makes a big difference when you lose three one-possession games like they did last season. The over-under for them is six. Now, the over is minus 200. Ooh. The under is plus 175. So they tend to lean on the side of seven and five Mm. as opposed to five and seven. I am dead split right down the middle push. I've got them at 6 and 6 this year. Uh, I've got them losing to Ohio State, I've got them losing at Michigan State, I've got them beating Rutgers and at Maryland, I've got them losing at Nebraska, got them losing to Northwestern, losing at Penn State, losing to Michigan and then beating Purdue at home in the final game of the year to get to a bowl game. So what I've got them you? 5 and 7. Is the but, is the Purdue game the Yeah, the Purdue game's okay. going to be the different game for me. What's crazy is is the juice is so high. It's like Vegas is begging you to take the under. Yeah, that's kind of what I mean, it seems just like. begging you take the under. Yeah, it's a little strange, right? Now he let me preface this by saying I really like Tom Allen, and I think Indiana is a really hard school to to coach at. It's a basketball school. Yeah, and they just they're never going to put the resources in football. No, but, but they, they I'll tell to. you this. Other teams hate playing this team. That's right. Absolutely hate them. They are always competitive. I think that's because of Tom Howe, and it's because of the defense. See, no one hates playing a team that's, like, offensively crazy. Yeah. And 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 you, But you can score anytime you want. They yeah. always hate playing a team that, that, is, that is just going to hit you in the mouth, that is going to play tough, hard-nosed, smash-mouth football. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. And that's Tom Allen. Yeah. I, I want them to be better. I've got them five and seven. I I literally I've tried to do everything I could to come up with six wins. They would have to have one of those scenarios where they just show up and, and pull a big upset out. I mean, if you think they're going five and seven, you might need to jump on that plus one seventy five under. I'm going to. It scares me. It I could yeah. I could understand that. That's a little scary. I could understand that. Uh next up, the Maryland Terrapins. Five and seven last year, three and six in the conference. Returning starters, they got three on offense, four on defense. As far as experience, the number ninety nine returning most experienced team in the country, number eleven in the conference. New head coach Mike Loxley. Three and thirty one as a head coach. He has never won more than one game in a season. Now he was at New Mexico, so it was a little bit say, different. Uh, but he, but he was also one and five as the interim head coach at Maryland back in 2015. Correct. So he's a dynamic recruiter, uh, but the process is going to take time for him because they are undermanned up front at linebacker. Uh, I mean, up front on both sides, like it's it's just crazy. Quarterback Josh Jackson transferred him from Virginia Tech. He should win the job from uh, Tyrell Pigroom. Yep, Piggy. Uh, running back Anthony McFarland Jr. is an absolute beast. Defense coordinator John Hoke, he's an NFL guy. Uh, his 3-4 scheme is going to be uh, really good for their all-Big Ten nickelback Antoine Brooks Jr. The biggest issue is fixing the culture. They've got some talent, but depth issues on both lines are just unforgiving in the Big Ten, especially in this division. Their over-under is 3.5. The over is minus 145. The under is plus 125. I mean, I got him at three and nine, so I might have to jump on that under. I, I don't trust Loxley as a head coach. No, yet. no, yeah, I don't either. And I think after you know the death of the player, after losing the head coach, after just everything that they went through, they had Matt Canada as the interim all year last year, and then they just I can't let him believe run off. Canada didn't get the job. I just Canada, can't believe Canada didn't get the job. He Canada's got some issues. I know that he's hard to work with, uh, but that I don't, I don't believe that's it. Though. Like you know? that's not the only, and I, I don't know exactly what it is, but I have heard from a lot of places that he is just kind of untouchable, like as a as a head coach. I, I don't know what's in the background. That's interesting, but I've heard from a lot of places that he's he's untouchable. And so so and and rather than stay on as offensive coordinator, oh, I mean, he yeah, no, he's I don't think he's even got a job right now, does he? Oh crap! I don't know. I don't think Canada has a job, and so I'll, I'll I'll look it up in a minute. I got them three and nine as well. Um, culture is a problem, but but also they've got to do something with their training staff. So we've talked about this when we come to the NFL and watch. It's kind of weird. It's that DC area, yeah. Um, with the Redskins, it, it's not an accident that every team in the league. Has some injuries, but nobody has the problems that are happening in D.C. year over year over year over year to a point where players are saying, I'm not I'm not playing for you. Trade me. I don't want to play here because I don't trust your medical staff. This program has been through more ACLs than I've ever seen in my life on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, they went through in one year, three quarterbacks, multiple receivers, running back. I mean, it's just like, I don't. I don't know that that can be an accident, right? No, I think you're right. At, at some point in time, it it has to be more than just bad luck. Yeah. No, I think I think you're right. Anyway, just my thought. I I, I think with with Loxley in there, I mean, he kind of wiped out the the staff that was there. So well, hopefully, after the 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 situation from last year. The administration wiped out. Wiped out everybody. Everybody. Uh, Matt Canada turned down an offer to return to Indiana as offensive coordinator. He is uh, He's currently unemployed. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Him with Tom Allen would have been awesome. I agree. Um, you know you know who I didn't talk about? Like, back to Indiana for two seconds. Uh, their new offensive coordinator, Kalen DeBoer, Fresno State offensive coordinator. Okay. And so... Yeah, so they they ended up uh, bringing in somebody that was pretty good, but yeah, Matt Canada currently unemployed. You ready to move on? Come on. Oh wait, I, so I've got him three and nine. What did you have, Matt? Three and nine. Three, three and, nine. and nine. Okay, so we're both at three and nine, which means that we could actually make money on the under there at plus one twenty five. Next up, 
The Michigan Wolverines. Now, this is a big one, right? Uh, Ten and three last year, eight and one in the conference. Returning starters, they got seven on offense, five on defense. Experience number forty-three, returning experience in the country, number five in the conference. Jim Harbaugh, thirty-eight and fourteen in four years. Their biggest question this year, one, I guess they've got two big questions, right? One, what is Josh Gaddis, the new offensive coordinator, going to do with this offense? And two, are they going to be able to kind of reload on defense? I think that they will answer both uh, with a, a, yes, Josh Gaddis is going to do some wonderful things on offense. I I would trust him to run an offense, especially with Shea Patterson. Correct. And then on defense, it's just kind of reload, right? Like it, they That's lose, right. they lose like six of their front seven. But they did it the year before, and we all said the same thing last yeah, year. Yeah, same thing. Oh, they lost all these guys. They, they got Carlo Kemp back on defense uh, as their defensive tackle, so they will be able to lean on him. Uh, they've got Devin Gill. They got Lavert Hill back, uh, both you know secondary you know, linebacker, whatever. Um, look, I, I think I just I, I love this team. I, I think that this is with the schedule setting up the way that it is. Like the offensive line is going to be a position of strength this year. Um, I think you know it, it, losing players like uh, like Rashawn Gary, Chase Winovich, Devin Bush Jr. That would devastate defenses, especially when they lose like defensive line coach Greg Madison to Ohio State. I I don't know, man. I think that they've recruited insanely well. I think that this is just kind of next man up level at this point. Like I think they're going to be really really good. Now they need to find a running back, right? They They'll lose, figure that out. They lost Higdon. But I think that you can just kind of like True Wilson ought to be pretty good. Chris how and Turner how ought good to be is good. how good is really good? I think as good as they were last year at it, and they were, you know, what ten and two last year. They were ten and two. So, I think, I think this year the schedule sets up better. I think that they are more experienced. I think they are better than the other teams on their schedule. You are going to find me. What do you have? Are we really? No way. There's no possible way we did that. All right. So we I, we both have Michigan 12 at 0. 12 and 0. 12 and 0. 9 and 0 in, in the, the conference playoffs. going into the uh the Big 10 championship game. And I think they win the Big 10 championship game. I think, I think they go to the playoffs. And I think they go to the playoffs. Yeah. I, I think they're 13 and 0. I mean, the way that the schedule sets up, like yes, you've got Army at home could be kind of difficult. Then you've got a bye week right before a trip to Wisconsin. So I think they get that one done. You've got Rutgers right before Iowa. You've got Illinois right before Penn State. Now, you've got at Penn State right before Notre Dame. Penn, but Penn State is not the Penn State we used to know. Exactly. They have, they have changed so much over the last couple of years. They've lost a lot in the last two years. You've got a, a bye week before you play Michigan State at home. Then you've got at Indiana, which is always tough. And then you've got Ohio State at home. So here's here's my thought process with this. Jim Harbaugh is a really, really good coach. He doesn't just forget how to coach, okay? Yeah. He took Stanford when Stanford hasn't been anything since John Elway and made them back into a national power. Not a good team like they are now. A national power, all right? He then goes to the NFL, the 49ers, who was atrocious at the time. Yeah. And he turns them in to a Super Bowl team yeah. with – Two guys that nobody could win consistently with as his quarterback. This is true. I think Brady Hoke left things pretty rough at Michigan. I think it took a little longer to turn around than normal. And I think the biggest reason for that is if you lose it in these cold weather areas where they don't produce a massive amount of homegrown talent, it's really hard to get back. Yeah. In recruiting. Yes. 100%. How do you get kids to leave Mississippi and Alabama and Texas and Florida and go play football at Michigan? That's the problem. And it's taken him a while, but now Don Brown and him have just turned this thing into a machine. It was only a matter of time. It isn't only a matter of time before they get the offense figured out. Last year, if they had any inkling of an offense, they they do a lot of things different. And they only lost two games to begin with. Yeah, I think I, I like the way that Notre Dame's schedule set up last year, and the way yep. that that team was was set up. Perfect. 
almost kind of the exact same thing that's, with Michigan this I, that's year. That's exactly the way I saw it too. Man, yeah. we don't talk. We need more conflict. Yeah, but. the only the only team that you have ever asked me about before we jumped in this this thing was Northwestern. Was Northwestern. That's just because there are guys, and I knew we would both be high. Yeah, and I just didn't want to be out outplayed by you. Now that's see that's the thing. I don't <laughs> like. I'm trying not to be biased here. You're Obviously, not because I'm, you're you're kind of the anti Michigan guy. Yes, you, I am. You've never been super crazy high on Harbaugh. Whenever no. we do our top ten quarterback coaching rankings, you got him in like eleven or nine or somewhere right there, and I've always got him at four or five. Yeah, and 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 I don't know that we're sold on Shea Patterson. Let me tell you this: I don't know that Shea Patterson finishes the season as that quarterback. McCaffrey's little brother is on campus there, and no. a lot of reports are that McCaffrey's little brother is doing some good things. I did. That's fine. If if but Shea, I ain't buying it. if Shea can't get the offense going and it looks like it's stuck in the mud like it did last year, do you you don't think any chance early on? I think they, they make a move. I think this is a completely different setup because of Josh Gaddis and that spread offense. Uh, you're I think probably this right. is much more com- uh, comfortable for Shea Patterson and what he does. Yes, I, I agree. I'm just asking. Yes. Okay. Yes. Man, twelve and zero. Got him 13 and 0. I think they make the playoffs. Yep. Believe that. All right. <sighs> Next up. Michigan State. The Michigan State Spartans, 7 and 6 last year. Returning starters, they got 9 back on offense, 8 on defense. That is absurd. Number 8 nationally in experience returning. Number 1 in the conference. Their over under is 8. The over is minus 130. The under is plus 110. Here's the deal. An elite defense coming back. They've got a healthy, capable quarterback with Brian Lewerke. Um, I mean, th- this team is going to be good enough to give anybody trouble. Injuries cost 10 offensive starters to miss 48 games last year. That resulted in the Spartans ranking number 117 in the nation in total offense. They, uh, they were number 10 in the country in total defense. This is... I mean, and they, and they got all these dudes coming back. They they scored seven points or less in let's see one two three four of their last seven games. That is insane. That is just absolutely insane. They lost six to seven to Oregon. They lost at Nebraska nine to six. They lost to Ohio State twenty six to six. They lost to Michigan twenty one to seven. Like yes, those are all. Pretty difficult defenses, right? But if they if they get ten points, but, if they get to double digits, they're a nine win team. Listen, listen, this team scored six points on Nebraska. That's right. That is bad. Really, it's really bad. Really bad. So while it is good that Lewerke's coming back, you know, at the time I thought, all right, Rocky Lombardi, like he's going to be able to do something here. He wasn't. Like it, it, there's, they got Connor Hayward back. They got Lewerke back. They got Cordy White back as a wide receiver. The offensive line, they got a ton of those guys back. Defense, I mean, they are just stacked. Uh, Josiah Scott is going to be D'Antonio's next great cornerback. Uh, I'm telling you, you would think that they are like a dark horse, right, for the Big Ten, like for this division, right? I don't know that I really buy into that. I think the schedule is really difficult. I've got them eight and four this year. I've got them right on that over under of eight. Tell me, where, where do you have them? I got them nine and three. I love this team. I do think they have a really hard schedule. They're at Ohio State. They're at Northwestern. They're at Michigan. They're at Wisconsin. Those are four really hard road games. They've got a bye week before Penn State comes to visit, that's and right. then a bye week after that. Yeah, that's, like, that, that's it just hurts a weird. That their bye weeks are almost back to back. Yeah, that doesn't help them at all. And, and it's just one of those things where those four road games, if they come away with one win out of those four, I think that's a winning season. I think, holy crap, we did something big. I think, yeah, I think it's successful. I think it's successful. Um, if they came away with two wins and they hit double digits, it's one of the best coaching jobs we've ever seen. Yeah. that's it. Their, their, so offense, Mike their offense last year, like, remember, they – they switched everything up on offense this year, but they kept all the same guys. Yeah, they just they just changed their positions around. 
Uh, look, last year they averaged just 5.2 yards per play on first down, which was 109 in FBS, and 1.1 gains per game of 30-plus yards. That was 126. They had neither efficiency nor explosiveness on which to lean. I I think even with bringing back like a healthy Lewerke and everything else, like remember, all of these numbers are put in together. It's not like they were much better with him before he got hurt. So, I don't know, man. I I think... Uh, I think this is an 8-4 and four team. I think if they were ever going to have a breakthrough year, this would have to be the year. Like, the, the schedule is difficult. They don't need their offense to be monstrous. They don't need to score 40, 50 points a game. No, but... They, they just need to average, like, 22 a game. Well, I, I'll tell you this. They did not give up... Uh, let's see. They gave up 31 to Utah State in the first game and did not give up that many points again for the rest of the season. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they can average 24 points a game, they're going to be almost impossible to beat. Yeah, they, they averaged 18.7 last year. I don't know that they can do that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Now if I'm can. asking for a touchdown better. That's hard. It, it is pretty difficult. All right, let's let's uh, let's close out. we got three more. Two big ones, one little one. The Ohio State Buckeyes, 13-1 and last year, 8-1 and in conference. Returning starters, they got four on offense, nine back on defense. Experience? Number 94 in the country. That's number nine in the conference. Their over-under is 10. The over minus 135. The under is plus 115. Look, Ryan Day comes in. Urban Meyer is gone. Uh, Day looked really good in the first three games last year. It seemed like things were much more stable. I don't think that that necessarily means that he's a better coach than Urban Meyer. Uh, This year is all about quarterback Justin Fields. He transfers in from Georgia he was a top five prospect nationally the year before last. He's got the reins now. They they ran off Tate Martell. Um, look, he's got a rocket arm and he's got wheels for days, right? Like it, it, we we've seen Justin Fields. Right. However, we never saw it in college. Like that was there any point that you saw him at Georgia and you said, okay, no, but that's also it. never saw any type of offensive mind around him either. Agreed. That I mean Agreed. that's. What kind of offensive coaches were were we looking at there? True. No, you're you're right. Not, and not, I, they I respect, weren't they weren't Day. I respect Jim Cheney, but no, he's not Ryan Day. That's it. Not, That's not it. by any no, stretch of the not imagination. Not a knock on Georgia's coaching, but but there's a reason Day got the head coaching job at Ohio State. Yeah, they've uh, now I will say this: Ohio State they have got some skill position talent like crazy, right? That's right. So it's skill position like running back, and they got J.K. Dobbins back at running back. Well, they're gonna just there's just a revolving door of running yeah. back and receivers. K- K.J. Hill, Austin yeah. Mack, guys like that, they're all coming back. Uh, the issue is going to be the offensive line. They they need to stabilize the offensive line. If they can do that, uh, they could be really really good. Otherwise, you got to temper the expectations, and that's kind of what I'm doing here. Um, even with all the talent up front, the Buckeyes allowed foes to rush for 4.5 yards per carry. Uh, look, Ohio State allowed 25.5 points per game last year. That is the most in the history of the Ohio State program. Can you believe that? Doesn't surprise me. That is just crazy. Like it's and, and that's and, playing against Michigan and Michigan State. Neither one of them could score on anybody. Yeah. Well, I mean, Michigan scored 39 points against them. Yeah, but a lot of that's garbage time. A lot of it was garbage time, but it's still 39 points. I guess it still right. runs yeah. into the average. Yeah, you're um, right. But yeah, they had not allowed more than 23 points per game since 1999. That's just absurd. Uh, I can't imagine Rutgers scored much on them. No. Maybe, maybe they did. But like, Let's see. Rutgers scored three. Yeah. Tulane scored six. So you're talking about I mean, all of those points came from conference opponents. Well, I mean, Except Maryland Bish- put up 51 on them. Yeah, I remember that. Nebraska put up 31. That went into, uh, that went into like double or triple overtime, too, that Maryland game. Yeah. They per- went for the overtime, the, Purdue, for the win. Purdue scored 49 on them. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, Purdue hung it on them. It, it, Northwestern even put up 24 points on them. Like right. Northwestern only averaged, what, 18 points a game? Yeah, like so that? Wasn't, it wasn't a lot. Wasn't a lot. So, uh, defense, I mean, Jordan Fuller could have jumped in the NFL, but he is one of the Big Ten's best defenders, and he's back. Uh, Chase Young, plenty of ability on the end. Nine and a half sacks last year. Uh, look, I, I think that it all comes down to whether or not Justin Fields is the real deal. And I think that he will be good. But remember, this will be his first season as a starter. It helps that they've got 
somewhat of an easier schedule to open up things. Like they've got Florida Atlantic, Cincinnati at Indiana and Miami, Ohio. But man, it, I've got I'll, I'll I'll go on and tell you what I got them. How's that? Okay. I've got them nine and three. I, I got them six and three in conference. Losses at Nebraska, at Northwestern, and at Michigan to end the season. Uh, I think the game at Nebraska, Nebraska is going to be amped up for that one. Just that that is their we're back. We're com- like and they I think Nebraska will be undefeated at that point. It'll be two four no teams. Everybody amped up for it. I think Ohio State loses that, but then they come back the next week. They beat Michigan State at home. They've got a bye week before Northwestern. We both think Northwestern gets that one done. Then they come off the Northwestern loss and beat Wisconsin. You know, it's. It, I think they beat Penn State like they have been. It's. I, I got them know. ten and two. I, I. You could easily talk me into to nine and three. Pretty simple. I can't see much worse than that. I do see. You think the opening of the schedule is easy for them, especially new quarterback trying to get a feel for his new team and i think cincinnati and indiana defensively are going to give them problems and they could. Now, i don't think offensively they can hang with ohio state i think ohio state wins those games but that is not what you want a new quarterback coming into a new system defensively they're going to go against cincinnati indiana michigan state wisconsin who i think's defense is going to be good and michigan they've got five Defenses that just are gonna hit you in the mouth and beat you up. Well, here, here's the other if side. Fields, if Fields wins ten games against this conference, against those teams, then then he earned it. He got it. It's, I, I think with Cincinnati and Indiana, their experience level is so low right oh, now. Oh no, substantially low. Um, but they're really well coached teams by defensive I take guys. Back. Indiana, however, it, Indi- Indiana's experience level is way up there. I was way off. Well, the, but, the, but the caliber is not the caliber of talent. It's completely it's just, different. It's drastically different. But defense doesn't matter. Right, we we got to run through these in like six minutes. we got well, two more. we literally can just give Rutgers schedule record. Yeah, we could probably do that. Penn State, 9-4 and four last year, 6-3 um, and three in the conference. Returning starters, they got five on offense, six on defense. Experience-wise, number 123 in the country. That's number 13 in the conference. Their over-under is 8.5. The over is plus 120. The under minus one forty, uh, things. I'm not going to say they're not looking good because this is completely different than than what they were going through just a few short years ago. Um, Sean Clifford is the redshirt sophomore quarterback that appears to have run off Tommy Stevens. Uh, he competed pretty well in spring practice, and I think Tommy Stevens saw the writing on the wall. But look, it, the difference is Trace McSorley was a flat out winner, That's right? And he was maybe the most respected quarterback in the conference. And like he was a coach's player. Can Sean Clifford bring any of that leadership and that uh, just togetherness that McSorley did? Because this was McSorley's team for three years. That's right. Like, and, and I don't know what this team will look like without him. Um, you know, they've got Ricky Slade, uh, wide receiver coming back, uh, or sorry, uh, running back coming back. Uh, 45 rushing attempts last year. He is the team's most experienced runner. They don't have a lot of experience as far as quarterback and running back go. Wide receivers, they're going to be starting a freshman wide receiver, Justin Shorter. They've got a ton of sophomores and freshmen, not a lot of experience at all, but they got talent. Sure. Defense, they were eighth in the country in pass efficiency defense last year. They got two starters back in the secondary. I don't know they're going to be as good. Uh, they do have, like, they're going to be able to get pressure on the quarterback. And I think that will help them out a ton on this. Well, they're going to have to have it. They're going to have to lean on the defense this year while waiting for the playmakers, like the young guys on the other side, to get up to speed. Um, you know, they, they've had three straight recruiting classes that have been in the top 12. I think this year you really start to see that. But... Early on, it could be a little bit difficult, and I, I think just for the whole season, it's going to be trying to get caught up, right? So I've got Penn State at 8-4 and four this year. I've got them 5-4 and four in the conference. I've got losses at Iowa against Michigan, uh, at Michigan State, and then at Ohio State. I've got them 8-4 and four as well. I, I think you're, you're dead on. Their offense is going to take a major hit. Defensively, they should be okay. 
the the problem is I I think this conference is getting better across the board. Yeah. I, they play Purdue. I don't think you can just be a pushover against Purdue. Are they going to have more talent than Purdue? Yeah. Purdue's coming to Penn State? Sure. I don't know that that matters. I don't know that you can just chalk up a W there and say this is what we always do. They could easily lose that game. There's a couple of games that I've got them winning that I think they can lose, and it won't surprise me at all. Yeah. And, yeah you're right. and, and if they ended up 7-5, and five, my question is, is what does Penn State look like next year? I think I think Penn State will actually be better next year than they are this year. So you don't think a bad season this year they'll make any changes? No, I think they'll be fine. Because I, there were, there were people that were talking about, you know, well, like, if if Urban Meyer doesn't take the USC job, like, it, would it surprise you if James Franklin takes it? No, that's that's the guy that I thought was gonna take it. I think it's Urban Meyer. I think Meyer takes USC, but we'll see. We that's the fun part about college football. Sure. That's a, you know the players and whatnot that that's become a, a fun thing. But either way, uh, let's wrap things up. Rutgers, the Scarlet Knights, one and eleven, one and eleven, zero oh and nine last year. Six returning starters on offense, five on defense. Number seventy five in the country in experience. Number seven in the conference in experience. Over under is two and a half. The over minus one fifty. Vegas expects them to go three. Uh, under is plus one thirty. I will tell you this. I have got them at 2 and 10, 0 and 8 in the conference. You got them 1 and 11. 1 and 11. 1 and 11. I'll take and I'll take that under bet. I like to give everybody at least a little bit. We gave them a win. Um their offensive success rate last year was 28.8%. That is worst in all of FBS. Uh look, since Ash took over in 2016, Rutgers scoring offense was 127th in 2016, 121st in 2017, and dead last, 130th last year. Only 13.5 points per game. Uh, I know you want to give them the win over Liberty. They will be outcoached in a way in which they have never been outcoached by a team that is probably bringing less talent to them. Yeah. When Liberty comes to town. Now, I'll tell you this. if, If they just run Raheem Blackshear over them the whole time, like they just never throw the football. Then it might not be anything then, Liberty can do. Then just they might kind yeah. of dude. But yeah, and then at Illinois, it, while Illinois is bad, Illinois went to Rutgers last year and drummed them, oh, yeah. smoked them. Uh, to check this out, McNulty, the first offensive coordinator in a decade to return for his second season. Think about how long that is. The first offensive coordinator in a decade to come back for a second for two season. Years. Like they they have to get better everywhere. Like they are this is such a losing culture that they can't even get into battles for recruits in their own backyard. And I want Rutgers to like I remember when Greg Schiano was there and they were they were fun. They were good. My my issue with people who used to crap on Greg Schiano was this guy had them playing in a ro- in an orange bowl. Yeah, I mean, Rutgers was winning. Not just winning, they played in an orange bowl. Yeah, it's just, it's crazy. Um, so, let's let's crap on a guy's resume. Yeah. All right, they, nobody, nobody in college football has got that on the resume. Nobody. Rutgers fans, I believe, will want Chris Ash gone after this season, but look, uh, $7.5 million will still be owed to him. And, uh, his who, boss who is taking those jobs. His boss Hobbs, uh, the athletic director, it wants him to succeed. So, like, I who, think he'll probably be there again next year. Who are who? Who's taking that job? I think a lot of people would take that job. That's still a Big Ten job. Like, and they're going to stu- so for years they have not gotten as much money as the other like the the legacy Big Ten programs. Correct. Uh, they in Maryland have not, but they are starting to get their bigger piece of the pie. The more money keeps coming in, the more you can improve your facilities, the more you can really recruit with people. I don't know what you're paying those other coaches, but I can go 1-11 and you can pay me half. Yeah. Just just pay me half of what you paid the last seven, eight guys, 
and I'll come and I'll give you the same results. You save fifty percent of the money. Can you believe Chris Ash still owed seven point five million dollars even after this about. season? That's what I'm talking about. I mean, that is some crazy, crazy stuff. All right, go to winningcureseverything.com. That's gonna wrap up the Big Ten. Uh we got what, Michigan twelve and oh, and then either Iowa or Northwestern coming out of the other division. Um, yeah, Northwestern. So yeah, go download the podcast. Uh, subscribe to Apple Podcast. Go just go to winningcureseverything dot com. It's got everything over there. Share the show out. Go to tunicatravel dot com. We appreciate them for sponsoring the show. We will see you guys next go round. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything dot com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures at Gary WCE or at Chris B Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.